We all love animation, but we hate how long it takes. In this video, you will learn how I made a pro quality animation quickly using Cartoon Animator and AI tools. You won't believe how fast this can be done. Stay to the end of this video to check out the final animated short so you can see for yourself how fast high quality animation can be done. Here's how to do it step by step. This was done in eight steps mixing AI and human creativity using tools, all inside a fast and repeatable pipeline. Follow this map and you'll always be able to finish one complete animated short. Let's start with the foundation. Step one, the story idea. Every animation begins with a story. Without a story, you've got nothing to animate. What if I told you that before I started, I had no idea what I was going to animate? So what did I do? I went to ChatGPT and used this prompt. You can pause the video to check it carefully if you want. And then I got several different ideas from which the one that called my attention was idea number two. I really like this, like, if I don't recognize me, the calories don't count. That's for a diet. And I thought, oh my God, that's hilarious. I like it. So an idea popped in my head of girls gossiping and I really like this image. Now that I had an idea that I really liked, it was time to go to step two, the script. I already had an idea in mind of these women gossiping and I even got an image that I could provide to ChatGPT. So in here, I just used my imagination to imagine the scene going on, I put up a couple of bullet points and then had ChatGPT create the story for me. Then I needed to give names to the characters so after checking a couple of them, I decided to go with Wilma and Rita. I like it because Wilma sounds like the character from the Flintstones and Rita, I, I don't know, I like it, it sounds retro. So this is basically the dialogue and then just because I like to keep things professional, I did this like professionalization of the script, like making it a little bit professional. And also I used ChatGPT to create the descriptions. I just asked ChatGPT to give me the descriptions and then it did all of this for me. Now with the script done, we can go to step three, the storyboard. I used ChatGPT again to help me create a plan out of this storyboard. This was surprisingly very helpful. I used column one and then column two for the visual description and then the shot type and then the framing, the camera angle, the view, and then it creates a table for me. I can download that table here or I can also use this hack. Can you provide it in TSV format for easy copy paste? Now all I do is click copy, go to a new spreadsheet and paste. Look at that. Now, of course, I formatted it a little bit and this is what I had. So now I can take any of these and start creating the panels. But before that, I wanted to ask for references, like what references can I use, right? And then it gave me a list of 2D animated comedy shows. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. And then I thought, hey, I like Kim Possible. I went to here and then, yeah, if you Google it, like, yeah, I, that's a style that could look really good in Cartoon Animator. So I said, I like Kim Possible style and then started designing some characters just before I started doing the storyboard. Now it created the first panel, but I didn't like the subtitles. So I just said, please remove subtitles. And then I didn't like that the next one was different. So what I did was just continue building the story from there and see if it had consistency and look, like this is the next shot, a close up, and then and I was like, whoa, this is pretty cool because these are the same characters. I think it's learning really well. And then that's when she goes to the fridge, she sees the chocolate cake. Now, I didn't like that this is one cake and then this is a different. And so I asked for a fix and look at that. Now, sometimes there's some problems. When she closes the fridge, I wanted her to be proud. So this is okay, but the hand is the wrong hand. So eventually I fixed it, all with prompts. So here are all the panels for the animation. I really liked it. And now with the storyboard ready, we go to step four, the animatic. This is like a rough cut of your animation, but without animating anything. For me, it's just a way to see how everything comes together, the sound, the music, everything with the storyboard. For this, I used Eleven Labs. You can go to elevenlabs.io. If this is your first time, you can try for free. You get a couple of credits and it gives you enough to do the voices of your first animated short. Once you're in, you can just click on text to speech 
and then you can just write the text of the script. Now, this is a little hack that I learned. If you put this in quotes, it sounds better. Look, it, let me just put it like this. I'm gonna generate it and listen to it. Oh my. I mean, she's supposed to say, oh my. And it's, this sounds so flat, look. Oh my. Right, so what you can do is put quotes and then say this, a little direction, exclaim with surprise. And also I'm gonna up the style exaggeration and do a couple of tries to see which one sounds better. Oh my, exclaimed with surprise. I didn't like it, let's see another one. Oh my. Nope. Oh my, oh my, oh my, exclaimed with surprise. That was good. Oh my. Right, so all you do is regenerate this speech again and again until you get good acting. Then I went to Suno to create the music for the animation. In here, the way you do this is, in my case, I can select instrumental and then give a short description, and then I can record myself on the bottom here. Just click record, and I, I want to show you something. This is my recording. I thought it was cool. Now listen to this. This is with Suno. That is so cool. And then I just explored like what happens if I ask the same melody but epic. Check this out. That was crazy. And then I used this prompt without any sound reference and it created this for the main part of the animation. Very nice, so now I had the music and the audio, so all I did was put it together in a video editing software. In my case, I'm using Premiere Pro. See, let me just play a little bit so you can see how this looks like. Perfect weight loss hack. Oh my. No cravings, no guilt, just results. What? Tell me everything. Last night? There it was, a decadent slice of chocolate cake, staring at me, flirting with me, whispering sweet things. I said no. I walked away. I had control. Really nice, right? Now that we have the animatic, we proceed to step five, production. I call this the production phase because basically this is where you produce everything you need to do your animation. Now for the production, I need to have my characters talking, so I need lip sync. Now in this case, I provided this to ChatGPT and then tried generating, but I didn't like the results. Some I thought were really cool, like this one. I like the expressions and it goes well with the character. And then in here, again, this is not creating what I need. So look at what I did. I asked, analyze this screenshot, this is a little hack. And then what do you notice? And then, oh, like I am asking to analyze the, the mouth and then, oh, I notice all of this. Okay, use that as reference and now look, this was much better. I still didn't love it. So I ended up creating everything myself, drawing it bit by bit for the mouths and also the eyes. These are the mouths from Cartoon Animator. So because I want my character to be compatible, I actually drew every single one of them in my character style. And then the eyes, I used all of these as reference to create my character eye expressions. Once I had that, I like to have a folder called production and then inside, you can see that I have every element separated. I have the background, I have the chair, I have these, and all of that is extracted from the reference image, from this one. Now, if you want to learn more in detail, like how do you remove the head and have this part drawn for you, I didn't draw anything, I used AI. So how do you have all of that? Well, I'm conducting a webinar where I will go into more detail. You can either check the replay in the link below or register if the webinar has not happened yet. You can be there live and ask me questions at the end. Once I had all the production elements ready, I could now go to step six, the rigging. I won't go into too much detail because there's a lot of tutorials. I can provide the links below this video. But for now, let me show you what I did in here. First, I'm going to expand the workspace just to show you better. And this is what I did. I extracted the arm, the forearm, and then the hand and also had to redraw inside here. I have another webinar where I go into much more detail on that. And the same happened with the head. 
the whole head is separated into parts. I have the eyes and the mouths and also the nose in separate layers. Now in here, you will notice that I have several mouths in here. In there, I'm just following this template, right? But these are my own drawings and the same for the eyes. I can make the character blink in all those different ways and I can also have all those changes for the eyes. Once I had that, I took the template from Cartoon Animator and just put the bones and the images where they need to be. Now, because I want to save time, notice that I just have the legs outside. And then eventually, I also, because I'm not going to be animating this arm, I can put these bones in here just so I don't have to worry about animating the arm at all. Once I had that, I can just click and drag into Cartoon Animator. And now my character is ready to be animated. I can move her. But do you see that when I move her, the <laughs> lower part of the body kind of flaps? I don't like that. So to fix that, I go to composer mode, select the hip bone, and then click on bone editor, and then I add pins. These are the pins that I added right here. You can see that now when I move her, look at that, nice. Now all of that was only for two characters, Wilma and Rita. The rest of the animation doesn't need that complication. For example, this one, is, this is actually a prop, and then this is also a prop, and then this, the hand, is also a prop. And then in here, I can just use the FFD and have the mouth open. That doesn't require any rigging at all. So that saves me time. It's just three props, really easy. And that's something that I like to do. I like to save time, and the storyboard helps me just rig whatever I need that is absolutely necessary. And then anything else that I don't need, I can just have it as quick props. And with that, we can now move to step seven, the animation. Now, before we animate each panel, click subscribe so Revolution can keep you updated with the best tips and upcoming exciting features for Cartoon Animator and iClone. They have a lot of really cool stuff. Also, clicking subscribe is free. So just click and now let's go to step seven. Step seven is the most fun to do because this is where you bring your characters to life. You can make them talk and express emotions, really cool. But before we do any of that, you need to understand that the best pipeline that anyone who does the best animations in Cartoon Animator animates each sequence separately. Now, because my animation has 18 panels in total, you can see that I have in total 18 project files in Cartoon Animator because I'm animating each one separately. So for that, what I like to do is I take each panel and then I render, like I select that clip and then render the audio and then select this other clip and render the audio. So at the end, you can see that when I go to any production folder, each one has its own audio. Number four has the audio there. Number one has the audio and every single one has the audio for that panel. I follow these steps. I go to the folder of the scene that I'm going to animate. And then in Cartoon Animator, I open the timeline, make sure that I'm showing the project, then click on sound effects and then bring the audio for that scene. I finally cracked it. Bring that to the beginning, go to the end of here and then click project settings and just put that frame here. In this case is 63. And now when I bring all the elements, I like to render a reference to how this should look like. So I bring this as a background. That way I can actually bring, for example, this background as a prop, make sure that I'm on frame zero and then position it way back and then resize it. Once I have that, I can disable the background and just keep bringing the elements that I need. I just click and drag and then repositioning, resize them. For the chair, I can control click and drag and then I click flip on top and then we have it. And then I keep bringing characters and elements, positioning and resizing when I need to. Once I have that, I can go to project settings again, disable the image, press OK, and then I can activate the background. And now I have a scene that I can work with. Then I like to do the lip sync by using all these lips that I have. And then I just make sure I have all the animation I need from simple expressions to simple blinks. And then I just keep doing that for every scene of the storyboard. And at the end, I like to render everything 
as a PNG sequence. That's just my preference. You just go to render PNG sequence and then I like the HD. I just export, but you can also render it as video and select MP4. Once I have all these sequences ready, we can go to step eight, putting it all together. With all the scenes ready, you can just import them into your software and then you can just click and drag each one of them into the timeline. It's very easy. All you do is simply click and drag, just like that. Once I had everything ready, the animation is done. Let's check it out. I finally cracked it. The perfect weight loss hack. Oh my. No cravings, no guilt, just results. What? Tell me everything. Last night, there it was. A decadent slice of chocolate cake, staring at me, flirting with me, whispering sweet things. I said no. I walked away. I had control. But I came back with a secret identity. Poor chocolate cake didn't know what hit him. Wait. So how does that help with weight loss? Well, easy. If the chocolate cake can't recognize me, the calories don't count. Really nice. I like the music. I like how this turned out. Of course, I usually go back and do some little adjustments here and there, but all in all, it's so fun to do. And now you can do this too. Just follow these exact repeatable steps to animate anything you want. Whether it's for fun or for a contest or for a client, now you know how to do it. Now, if you want to dive deeper into how I use AI in Cartoon Animator to speed up every step, I'm hosting a webinar in Revolution where you will learn how to boost your animation workflow with AI powered techniques. Everything that you just saw in here, but in more detail. You can register for free clicking the link below. And if this webinar already passed, that link will send you to the replay of this. Have fun animating and subscribe. Take care.